exciting but hopefully still very chill video for you. Um, I've been teasing a PC upgrade for quite a while now and I've received many, many requests over the years for a full PC build video. And this is the first part of that in today's video. Uh, we are going to unbox all these delightful goodies here for my new PC build from the CPU to the RAM, the motherboard, and storage, and even a big old heatsink, uh, heatsink fan, CPU cooler over here. Um, the only thing that uh, I don't actually have here right now is the graphics card, because the graphics card is an RTX 3080, and many of you might be familiar with the um, infamous supply issues that the RTX 3000 series has suffered, um, so I've got to wait a while longer on that, but I can still build the PC uh, in the meantime and use my, my uh, old graphics card, my RTX 2060 will do the trick for the time being. So, um, the other items you do not see here are the case, because I'm going to be reusing my current case, which is a fractal design and define R5, uh, a very quiet case, um, and um, a power supply, uh, because I'm reusing my existing one again. It's an EVGA Supernova G2 750 Gold. Um, so, the goal with this build is to create a stealth machine, an incredibly powerful yet whisper quiet machine that I can use for recording ASMR gameplay, uh, as well as for all my video editing needs. Um, so uh, I've gone um, maybe a little overboard here <laughs> in some respects, but uh, I, I don't upgrade very frequently. My last upgrade was in well, I guess I got the new GPU uh, about two years ago, but um, the overall PC, you know, the whole platform really uh, dates back to 2013. So it's like seven years, seven years old now or so. So this is long overdue. I'm very excited about this. Part one uh, is going to be uh, this video here where I unbox all this stuff. It's going to be dinged. So NVMe is the uh, communication 
it's got what they call your SLC caching, so it uses a faster type of flash memory, essentially, um, as a cache, so that accelerates it for, uh, you know, any procedures or tasks that fit within the cache, and then it, you know, slowly, or slowly, <laughs> slower, writes it out to the, the slower TLC memory, triple layer cell memory, uh, then advanced LDPC, I actually, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm not sure. Something. So, of course, the great advantage of solid state drives is that they are very fast compared to conventional mechanical drives, but they tend to cost quite a bit more per gigabyte of storage. Um, they're certainly not cheap, yeah, you know, even though they've come down quite a bit in price over the years here. Um, they're still not nearly as cheap as a as a conventional spinning platter drive. Um, and so two terabytes was about what my budget could bear. You can get up to four terabyte SSDs these days, maybe even bigger now. I honestly am not sure. Um, but uh, I think two terabytes will do me. Um, when you consider that the modern consoles come with like a terabyte or less of storage, like the Series X and the PS5, uh, I think a combined three terabytes uh, should do me for the time being. I've also got some big external uh, hard drives to back up all my my video content and stuff onto to store it on there. So it's kind of like my archival setup. Uh, whereas these are for stuff that I need access to right now. Okay. Um, so let's thing up. So, A-Data tends to make more sort of budget-oriented uh, stuff, but um, my Go faster. <laughs> um, on the back, 
here. We'll just cover up the serial numbers and all that junk, but you can basically just see it's it's just a, a black PCB. And then the, the end here, this is where it inserts into the slot on the motherboard. And then the whole thing just sits flat, just flush against the motherboard. And you pop a screw in right here just to keep it, keep it uh, secured. So that's two terabytes of storage right there. Pretty crazy how much they can fit in these tiny spaces these days. Most modern laptops and such come with drives like this, and more and more PCs are starting to. So that is my my bulk bulk storage for this build.
second loud, but uh, the wet drive that, that certainly really uh, would outperform this, uh, I believe, is the, the new Samsung 980 Pro. Um, I think that does use a new controller from Samsung that I believe is designed natively for PCI Express Gen 4, but um, those things are pretty crazy expensive right now. I could not justify it, um, especially given that the performance delta probably uh, is not really going to be that noticeable, if at all, in day-to-day -day use. I'm not, uh, I'm not too concerned, so... Show you the back here. It's funny, it's got a spot there that says serial number, but then no serial number on it. Not sure what that's about. Samsung 980 Pro, I believe, which uh, no doubt beats it out. And there will be new drives coming to market soon. It'll probably kick its butt. That's always the way with tech. But right now, right now, this is some of the fastest you can get. Flip it over there. I'll just cover up that serial number again. But you can see on the back again, a black PCB. Those gold connector pins there. Rocket NVMe 4.0. PCIe 4.0 M2 SSD. And it does come with a very, a very tiny heatsink, <laughs> but there's not much there. It's very thin. So, uh, the ones that come with the motherboard will sit on top of that and help radiate the heat away. And this is a one terabyte size. I'm not sure if it's available in two terabytes. I think it might be, but it was, uh, it was, uh, pretty expensive. I, you know, I'm, I, I forget. I forget if it was. But I figured one terabyte would be enough for a boot drive. Alright, let's move on to the next item. Next up, we're taking a look at the RAM, the Random Access Memory. The RAM is basically the, um, it's like the short-term memory of the PC. It's fast, relatively speaking. 
faster than a solid state drive or certainly faster than a spinning platter hard drive but um, it's volatile which means that when it loses power there's uh, it's emptied it loses all its data so that's why it's like the short term working memory for while your PC is running but when you turn it off the RAM is emptied so I've actually got um, four sticks of RAM here and this RAM is from a company called G-Skill. G-Skill is fairly well regarded as a quality make when it comes to memory. Um, and really G-Skill just makes the, the, the PCBs and the heat spreaders and stuff. The chips on the RAM itself will come from one of the major foundries like Samsung or in the case of this memory, I think it's Micron who owns uh, like Crucial. You might have heard of Crucial before. Um, anyway, um, each of these sticks is 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3600 memory. 3600 refers to the frequency at which the memory runs. So if you do the math, that's 16, 32, 48, 64 gigabytes of memory. And that's a lot. That is much more than any games need right now um, uh, than most applications need honestly it's, it's kind of overkill um, but that said um, some applications such as Adobe Premiere um, After Effects uh, even Photoshop uh, these kinds of um, applications can actually make use of greater than 32 gigs of memory um, so you know video editing editing these kinds of things can be quite taxing on the memory subsystem um, and for that reason I thought I would just go for it and get the full 64 gigs um, we're just gonna open one of these because um, they're identical so there's no point in unboxing both here on camera but uh, as you can see they come in these uh, this plastic packaging G-Skill Rip Jaws Rip Jaws <laughs> or that cheesy I think they used to be called rip jaws because they had like kind of like teeth along the top of the heat spreaders but uh, the newer designs don't seem to have that so uh, it's just a, it's a relic now <laughs> it's just what they call them um, it says here on the back feel the rush of DDR4 performance uh, DDR4 double data rate 4 is the current memory standard for you know um, x86 PCs and uh, it's uh, been around for a while it's nothing fancy or new uh, in fact chances are DDR5 will be dropping by the end of 2021 or maybe early 2022 something like that um, so you know but that said uh, this is decently fast DDR4 memory um, DDR4 3600 is, um, you know, it's pretty quick. Um, it's also got low cast latency, which has to do with the, uh, the seek time latency. Um, uh, there's, well, we won't talk about memory timings right now, but the point is that um, these are pretty well tuned uh, sticks of memory. They're pretty quick and uh, they've got relatively tight timings, so uh, they should perform pretty darn well. Paired with my uh, my uh, 5950 or 5950X, pardon me. Let's. Thanks. 
just kind of snaps into place. There's little levers on each end that kind of just uh, hold it in place on the motherboard. Um, there's honestly not a lot to see here. The T-Skill branding on top. These were manufactured in September 2020. You can see that on there. So, pretty new. Um, and yeah, the Ripjaws branding on there. Um, yeah, I think these will work quite well. The one thing that these, this particular model of memory is not great at is overclocking, I gather. Um, it, it'll run at the rated speed just great. You might be able to squeeze a little more out of it, but probably not much, if anything. Which is a little bit regrettable, because it would be nice to overclock the Infinity Fabric on my CPU a bit, and that requires, if you want to keep a one-to-one -one ratio with your memory, that requires memory that can overclock reasonably well. But, the good news is they're pretty fast to stock, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, maybe I'll be able to squeeze a little bit of extra performance out of them. We'll have to see. But anyway, that is the RAM. Let's move on. Next up, we have the motherboard. The motherboard. The motherboard for this build that I've selected is the uh, Asus. Somewhere on here. Where does it say Asus? Asus. <laughs> ROG Strix X570E Gaming Motherboard. And um, I opted this motherboard for a couple of reasons. One, um, Asus is generally a really good make. Uh, they seem to have a much lower failure rate than a lot of other uh, motherboards from a lot of techs that I've talked to. A lot of technicians say they see a lot fewer Asus boards in than, um, than other makes. Um, in the past, I have had motherboards from um, ASRock. That was my my current one, or my, you know, my previous build, um, and from, uh, EVGA, actually, back when they made motherboards, that was a long time ago, um, and I've made friends builds with, uh, MSI and Gigabyte motherboards and things like that as well, and honestly, they've all been fine, um, even good in, in many cases, um, but, uh, the ASRock board that I've been using, the, uh, Z, Z89 Pro 4 is the one that I've been using for the last seven years or so, and um, it's it's been fine, but it has developed some weirdness over time, some little issues and, and uh, oddities, peculiarities, and I also never really found the, the user experience to be particularly great. Uh, I always found it to be a little bit janky. Uh, the support was always a little bit lacking, these kinds of things, so... Anyway, Asus is a bit more of a premium brand, I guess you could say. Often, their stuff does cost a bit more uh, for the same specs, so you sort of pay the, the Asus tax. Um, but in my experience and the experience of those I've, I've talked to, um, you know, they're, they're pretty good make, and this motherboard was quite highly reviewed, so the other reason that... I opted for this um, is because it's got all the features I want. It's got a lot of um, uh, high-speed USB connectivity, which I need. It's got the, you know, the X570 uh, chipset, which comes with the PCI Express Gen 4 support. Um, uh, it's got um, the built-in Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth and that stuff, which I needed. Um, and it's got uh, very high-quality power delivery, one of the best uh, power delivery setups of all the X570 motherboards. And a lot of people will tell you you don't really need X570. That's, this is sort of AMD's current top-end um, consumer chipset, I guess. And that's true. B550 is, is great for most people. Um, but um, I figured I'd opt for the X570. Um, because of the increased um, number of PCI Express lanes and connectivity available. Um, and uh, honestly, some of the B550 motherboards, uh, looking at the prices, they're not that much cheaper than the X570. 
Lots of other great features. 
looks like it's it's got maybe two antennas. I'm not quite sure. There's this thing, and then this thing. Oh, I think this is just a stand for the antenna. So this is technically the antenna structure right here. Pull it out to take a quick peek at it. Express slots for our expansion cards. So the graphic 
postcard will sit here in this slot. Uh, then we've got um, some additional slots in case we were going to run multiple GPUs, which of course we're not going to, um, because the um, the Rockstrix uh, RTX 3080 that I'm ultimately going to be getting uh, for this build, uh, it's like a two and a half slot or even almost three slot cooler. So uh, this this slot here will probably be unavailable to me, unfortunately. Uh, but that still leaves me with another PCIe 1X slot down here, which I will probably put my Elgato uh, HD60 Pro capture card in. Uh, this shiny little Supreme FX block down here that uh, is a shield for the audio circuitry. Um, I believe it uses uh, some kind of semi-custom version of Realtek's uh, ALC uh, uh, 1200 audio solution. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It doesn't much matter for me anyway because I'll be using my Motu M2 uh, audio interface, which I plug in by USB, so I won't really be using the motherboard audio much, probably. Um, what else? We've got a uh, chipset cooling fan here. This is maybe the item that has me the most worried <laughs> about this motherboard. I've heard conflicting reports about the noise that this thing makes. This is an unfortunate aspect of X570 motherboards, is they all have chipset cooling fans, except for like one model from Gigabyte, I think, which is outrageously expensive. Now, uh, I have uh, read that uh, this one is pretty quiet, and uh, so I'm hoping that it doesn't, uh, it's not audible over the, you know, the rest of the system noise, but as I've said, the whole point of this build is to be as quiet as possible, and so the fact that I had to compromise and, and put it, you know, have a board with a chipset fan here, uh, a little bit frustrating, but that's how it goes sometimes. Um, I've also heard that, generally speaking, the chipset doesn't really need the fan to run. Um, if you're not doing any really intensive, like, I.O. operations, uh, and I do technically have a PCIe Gen 4, um, like a NVMe, uh, NVMe um, a Gen 4 uh, drive that's going to be in here, so that might tax the chipset a little more. So it might need the cooling of the fan, but uh, you can remove this, this plastic shroud here, and you can unplug the fan if you want to. It's not recommended. It's probably against the warranty or something, but if it's really annoying to me, uh, I might try that and just monitor chipset temps and see if they're still safe. You know, we'll just have to see. Anyway, um, we've got all kinds of other headers down here. This is going to be uh, front USB, um, additional USB front audio out, probably there. Um, uh, front panel connectors down here uh, for like power and things like that. Some RGB headers, some fan headers, these kinds of things. Um, over here, we have our SATA connections, which um, uh, I don't actually plan on using any of those. Uh, I just have a pair of NVMe drives that'll sit in the slots underneath these heat sinks. But um, they're there in case I want to expand storage later with a mechanical drive or something. Um, more fan headers. Here's the CPU power connection right here. Up here. Uh, these are, again, big heat sinks that cover the power delivery. It should hopefully help keep that nice and frosty. Um, and then, uh, we've got the, the I.O. shield in the back, back I.O. here, rear I.O. So we've got a lot of USB ports, which is great, because I need them. We've got the BIOS flashback button that I was talking about. We've got two Ethernet jacks, one for the gigabit Ethernet, and one for the 2.5 gigabit, uh, Ethernet. Um. Uh, those two coaxial connections there, the golden ones, which are for the um, the antenna, for the Wi-Fi antenna there. Uh, then we've got audio. We've got the SPDIF uh, optical out there, as well as uh, a, um, a quintuplet, I guess, five uh, connectors for surround sound, if you were to use those, which, I again, I probably won't. Um, yeah, and 
Interestingly, this board comes with a pre-installed uh, IO shield, this backplate. Normally, you kind of got to pop that into the case yourself and then guide the motherboard into the cutouts in the IO plate as you slide it into place. But uh, this comes pre-installed just to make things a little easier. So, um, what else do we have here to look at? Just lots of little headers, bits and pieces, cool stuff. Uh, down here we have a diagnostic display that will display error codes to help you troubleshoot if you're having issues. It's right there. There's the back of the board. This bracket to support the CPU socket. And the coolers that are mounted on there. Lots of fun little traces. Also, you can see Asus has put on some, like, I don't know, Writing, what does it say? Join the Republic. Uh, <laughs> oh, in different languages. Gamer. Edge. <laughs> Lots of cringy stuff. But, and then the name of the model here. Rockstrix X570E Gaming. So. That is pretty much that. Um, it's a nice looking motherboard, you know, it's, it's pretty understated for the most part. Well, <laughs> okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it, it's not too bad, you know, like it's, it's black and gray, that's an aesthetic I can, I can get with. There are some RGB accents, uh, this up here, this raw local will illuminate, I think this block here might, uh, there's some RGB that happens down here. Uh, along or under the shroud, I think. We'll see when we get it all installed and plugged in, but, you know, um, this board is going to be uh, inside a case without a window anyway, so it's it's kind of a moot, moot point, really, but anyhow, that is the motherboard. Uh, now, I guess we better take a quick look at what else was in the motherboard box, so I'm going to move this aside, and we'll take a look at the remainder of the stuff in the box really quick. Okay, so here's the box back again, and I think we can just lift out this whole, this whole shebang. There we go. And underneath we've got uh, just a bunch of stuff, oh, including some kind of coupon code that I'm probably going to have to blur out. I don't even know what it's for, but, oh, it's for cable mod. So, uh... Yeah, if you wanted custom cables, apparently this motherboard ships with a 20% off coupon for cable mod. I'm probably not going to use that. It's just for aesthetics, but it's for custom cables for your power supply. Hey, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the ones I have work just fine, but we've got a driver disc, which is, uh, you know, progressively more and more outdated concept of a driver disc, but I guess they feel compelled to include it just in case, you know, you don't have an internet connection for some reason. <laughs> but of course, these days, you just you update it, all your, you know, drivers and chipset stuff online. In fact, I think Asus actually has a utility that just automates the whole process, which is kind of nice. Um, then we've got... Uh, 
colors. I'm not sure if these are supposed to go on the motherboard somewhere or if these are just for fun. I feel like they're just case decals for fun, you know, or decals if you're American. All right, why not? And what's this? something that would be both cool and whisper quiet and 
so I have recruited the Be Quiet, it says it right here, Be Quiet, Dark Rock Pro 4, no compromises, silence, and performance, capable of dissipating 250 watts quietly. Uh, this will come in handy because my CPU is uh, a beast, as we will see shortly. Um, but, uh, the Dark Rock Pro 4 has a reputation for being a delightfully quiet CPU cooler, a little bit quieter than the, uh, very popular Noctua, uh, 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 NH, uh, D15. Um, but, uh, also not quite as, uh, cool. It runs a little bit hotter, but a little bit quieter. Um, and I thought that was, uh, reasonable compromise for this build. My existing CPU cooler and my current build is the Noctua NHD14 and it's done a fantastic job over the years. I really can't complain about it. I am a big fan of Noctua. But uh, I thought we'd try something a little different this time and hopefully a tad quieter even. So... see a picture of the wee beast team. It's a big tower cooler. It's a heavy tower cooler, um, but I think it should be fine. I've never had an issue with my NHD 15 being too big or putting too much stress on the, the motherboard, so... It says right here, just in case you weren't sure. It says high end. Just so you know. So I, I didn't make it explicit, but the job of a, of a CPU cooler is to keep your CPU cool. <laughs> it's fairly self-evident, but um, that, that can be challenging if you are running a very powerful uh, processor. And uh, to do so uh, effectively and quietly is even more challenging. And there's many, many CPU coolers on the market. There's only a few that are truly top tier. So we've got a big package of some kind over here. It looks like it's got user guides and some other things. We'll look at that in a second. And then we've got our big so 
français, espagnol, français, Polish, and Russian. It's quite the interesting assortment of languages. A screwdriver specific for mounting this thing. That's awesome. I didn't know they did that. That's fun. It says be quiet on it. It's very heavy. Actually, this thing is super, super robust. Uh, it's just a Phillips head, but it needs to be long enough to go uh, down the holes in this thing and all the way down to board to screw it in. So I can see why they would include it, you know, because most people may not have a, uh, a screwdriver that long. And this is the heatsink itself. Um, it's quite heavy. It's got these big stacks of aluminum fins and the way it works basically is this surface here which is currently covered with uh with plastic to protect it it says please peel off label before you use it <laughs> warning yes do that you don't want this plastic between your cooler and your cpu so this this block right here sits flush against the integrated heat spreader on your your processor and then you you actually put a little bit of thermal compound on top of the cpu and then this squashes up against it and kind of creates a thermal compound sandwich um, that's intended to conduct heat very efficiently from your cpu right into this big old block of metal here and then uh that heat is carried away from the block and from your CPU by this uh, army of heat pipes. How many heat pipes do we have here? My god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven heat pipes which run through the block and then up into the stack of fins. And the stack of fins is literally just a giant 
radiator and its job is simply to uh, have uh, cold air blown over it and to transfer oops, to uh, transfer it's just the other fan that's in it's in a box for some reason uh, transfer the heat from the fins uh, to the air and then blow it out the back end and then carry it out of the case and uh, yes it's got two fans to accomplish this this one right in the front here and then another one which is in this box I think I'm going to leave it in there for now but uh, it uh, uh, sits in the middle here it's sort of sandwiched in between these two big old stacks of heat fins
Ryzen 5000 series CPU Zen 3 architecture from AMD. These launched uh, earlier this month, this month being November as of the time of recording. And um, uh, AMD has really knocked it out of the park with their last few releases, but this one, especially these CPUs, um, finally, finally um, surpass Intel in many single threaded benchmarks. Um, and they easily crush Intel in multi threaded benchmarks because they offer typically a lot more threads for your dollar. So AMD's really been just killing it lately with their CPU releases now. Uh, Intel's got new CPUs coming out in early uh, 2021, and um, I suspect that they will probably leapfrog AMD slightly uh, with single-threaded performance, but uh, nonetheless, this is going to remain a pretty beefy CPU and competitive uh, processor for a long time to come. Um, so this, I, I didn't really tell you exactly what it is, but it is a Ryzen 9 5950X. That is the most powerful part in the Ryzen uh, 5000 lineup. And um, that, here, let's uh, just show you guys right here. This is right there, 5950X. It is a 16 core thread part, which is mental to me, because uh, my CPU that I've been living with now for the last seven years, my trusty old i7 4770K, um, is a four core eight thread part, so this thing has four times the threads and cores available to it, uh, each of which runs significantly faster than my old i7, so it's going to be just a unbelievable upgrade. Um, no hate to my i7, by the way. It's been incredible. Uh, it's soldiered along so well. Uh, overclocked for years and years and years. Never complain. But I'm very excited for this upgrade. Some uh, information on the back here. Just about uh, Zen 3 architecture and all that. A little bit of stuff here and there, but uh, not much else. Honestly, this is a very understated piece of packaging considering the power and uh, honestly expense of the CPU within. Uh, Intel, I have to say, does a better job of hyping up their, their top end CPUs with uh, fancy packaging and stuff. This just looks very straightforward and utilitarian and not all that exciting, but it houses something very exciting. Um, so, uh, I must actually make a confession at this point. That confession is that the CPU is not inside this box because the CPU is actually already in my motherboard. Um, you might say, what? I just saw the motherboard so quickly. The magic of video editing, my friends. Um, so, uh, there's a good reason for this, though, and that is that the place that I bought this CPU from, a Canadian retailer called Memory Express, for what it's worth, um, they offer a thing where they will uh, test out your CPU, your motherboard, your RAM for you before you take it from the store. Um, and that is actually a really handy service because uh, it's not uncommon for a stick of RAM to be bad, for instance. Um, you know, for a motherboard to have issues and whatnot. So, um, uh, they actually took the CPU out of here already, popped it into the socket, um, and tested it out with my motherboard and RAM to make sure that it was all good to go before I left the store. Uh, of course, I could do those tests myself. But, uh, why waste my time, and, um, why leave the store with parts that might not be good, right? So that ensures that you don't have to do any awkward returns or RMAs or anything. You know you're leaving with good components, and I, I actually, it's a really handy little peace of mind service that they do. So, so the CPU is actually already sitting in the socket on the motherboard, and we'll take a look at that in just a 
second so you do get to see uh, the item itself but first let's just um let's take a look in here we've got there's like a glittery amd seal a seal of legitimacy i guess i don't know <laughs> into place. 
nice little latch there and that just keeps pressure on the CPU to keep it in the socket. I do find it funny that uh, these AMD CPUs, they, uh, this is sort of right way up, that's the back of the motherboard and this is the direction, you know, that it faces whereas uh, on an Intel motherboard I believe it, it looks right side up when you have the motherboard oriented this way just the way you might expect it to work. So in my mind, the Ryzen chips look like they're sideways, kind of. <laughs> but that's okay. You're never going to see it again once it's under the, the CPU cooler anyway. At least not until you swap out your CPU cooler or, or processor or, uh, or need to, you know, reapply your thermal compound or something. So there is the Wii Beastie. I just wanted you guys to see that in there. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm depriving you the uh, the opportunity of seeing me install it, um, but it just made good sense to let them do it at the store. So there it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe this brings us to the end of what uh, is probably a very long unboxing video. I, once I put all these pieces together, I reckon it's gonna it's gonna have a pretty uh, intimidating runtime. But I hope you found this interesting and informative. I like to uh, help educate, you know, with my videos. Maybe you learned a thing or two about PCs and PC components here. Uh, but of course, more than anything, I hope you found it relaxing, and I will remind you that I will be following this up in about a week with another video where I actually put all this stuff together inside a PC case. You guys will get to see that process from scratch, and then we will fire it up and see uh, how it performs, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I'll benchmark it or we'll see, but we'll, we'll build the thing anyway. So, thank you very 